Hey guys, so in this video, we will talk about the most important components of hereditary that dictate our life, DNA and RNA. We'll come to the structure on the screen later. First, we'll talk about the DNA molecule. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and is a double helix molecule that has a 5' prime phosphate end and a 3' prime hydroxyl end. This molecule is supported by a sugar phosphate backbone. So it looks something like this. So we have 5' prime phosphate and a sugar phosphate backbone. As you can see, we have phosphate and sugar attached to one another. And a 3' prime end. Why is a 3' prime end called a 3' prime hydroxyl end? Because it's attached to a carbon that is attached to a hydroxyl group right here. That's why we called a 3 prime and a 3 prime hydroxyl end. 5 prime phosphate is pretty self-explanatory. It's 5 prime end attached to a phosphate. That's why 5 prime phosphate end. The components of DNA are deoxyribonucleotides. There are four types. Adenine and guanine are purines and are Turing structures. So they look something like this. adenine and my guanine and these are my purines two rings another type of ring structure is pyrimidines two types cytosine and thymine so they look something like this one ring cytosine one ring thymine as mentioned before, DNA is a double helix molecule. The two strands of DNA are complementary and antiparallel. What does antiparallel mean? If one strand goes from 5 prime to 3 prime, the other strand will go from 3 prime to 5 prime. This arrangement is the antiparallel arrangement because the two strands are antiparallel. The other strand also has a sugar phosphate backbone. In a double helix molecule, a purine pairs with a pyrimidine. A pairs with T through two hydrogen bonds. Something like this. T, two hydrogen bonds. G pairs with C through three hydrogen bonds. So C, one, two, and three, three hydrogen bonds. C, cytosine, pairs with guanine, again, through three hydrogen bonds. Guanine, one, two, and three. And thymine pairs with adenine, through two hydrogen bonds, just like this. One and two. So this is a structure of a double helix molecule antiparallel arrangement and this base bearing, the hydrogen bond base bearing is called complementary base bearing. Complementary base pairing. All single-celled and multicellular organisms replicate their DNA. This ensures that each new DNA molecule formed will be an exact replica of the old DNA. That's how genetic information is passed on from one generation to the next. This process is called semi-conservative replication. What does semi-conservative replication mean? In a nutshell, replication consists of one old strand and one new strand. So let's say this is our... DNA, la, 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 our double helix. This goes through replication. Let's just say mm, one round of replication. So the newly replicated DNA will have one old strand, just like my purple, 
and one new strand. Again, one old strand, my purple, and one new strand. So this is our semi-conservative conservative replication. Let me just put this. Semi-conservative replication. Let's talk about RNA now. The basic molecular components of RNA are the exact same as DNA. They're huge and they both have sugar phosphate backbones and they're both composed of nucleotides. The major differences between the two that you should be aware of is that the sugar in RNA is ribose instead of deoxyribose. So the sugar in DNA looks something like this. DNA and my RNA sugar. DNA OH, H, 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 OH, CH2OH, and H. And these are my four carbons right here. RNA looks like this. C, 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 O, H, H, O, H, 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 O, H, C. These are my four carbons for my R RNA. Now note very carefully, at the two prime carbon, I have an H here, but an OH here. These are the two sugars used in the sugar phosphate backbone in DNA and RNA. They're both pentose, but this one has a hydroxyland, the RNA, and the DNA has a hydrogen instead of a hydroxyland. The nucleotides in RNA are called ribonucleotides, while the nucleotides in DNA are called deoxyribonucleotides. So this is a deoxyribonucleotide. This is another deoxyribonucleotide. The primidine base uracil replaces thymine. That's another major difference between the two. So instead of the thymine, we have a uracil. So let's make the structure of an RNA molecule real quick. So we have a 5 prime, phosphate, sugar, So these nucleotides that you see here are pretty much exactly the same, except instead of thymine, we'll have uracil. So let's make this adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Note the difference, thymine versus uracil. RNA is usually single-stranded, like 5 prime to 3 prime or 3 prime to 5 prime, just one single strand, instead of our DNA, which is a double helix, double-stranded molecule. So that is DNA and RNA.